everybody, Bill here from Western Welding Academy. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit today about some stainless welding. Uh, kind of what it takes to maybe get started a little entry level, beginner stuff with it, so come on in. So a lot of people will talk to you about stainless steel and the differences between that and carbon, and they bring a lot of science into it, and there is a lot of science in it. However, to just get started, to just do a little bit of entry level practicing, it's not too complicated. A couple things to keep in mind. You really want to make sure you have clean material. Cleanliness is everything in welding, in all aspects of welding, especially stainless. The other thing you want to make sure is that you have the right tools for the job and you have the right materials for the job. You'll find stainless steel in all kinds of things from your automotive world to boating, around the house, lots of different places. Can you weld stainless to carbon? Absolutely. You just got to have the right wire and that would be 309 in most cases. There again, pick the right wire diameter for what you're working on. The thinner the material you're working on, the smaller the wire in most cases. The other question that gets posed quite a bit is how do you tell if you're working on stainless or carbon? Because you can't always tell the difference with the naked eye. So a magnet is a really good way to test. Stainless steel shouldn't be magnetic. Carbon steel obviously is. Grab a magnet, check it. If it doesn't stick, you're probably on stainless. If it's super lightweight, you're probably on aluminum. And that's a whole different thing. Know your material, know what you're looking at, and uh, weld away. So today we're going to use an eighth inch TIG tungsten, 2% thoriated. We're going to use eighth inch stainless steel filler wire. This is 308. We are going on to carbon plate, but that's okay. The process is still the same and you'll still get the same end result. So the bottom line here is the biggest thing you want to make sure you have is good gas flow and a bit of a good procedure. There's debate. Do I walk the cup? Do I freehand? That's up to you. Try them both. Do whichever one works best for you. So what size materials and all that stuff has a lot to do with what amps you're running. Today I'm going to run about 120 amps to put this cap on. That's a little bit uh, much for some smaller stuff. Say you're doing exhaust pipe at home, you're going to want a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter equipment than what I'm using here. That said, let's just throw down some bead and see how things go. So getting started with your bead, it takes just a little bit of time to get everything rolling. And then once you kind of get it hot, you'll see it get hot, then you can start moving. There's a couple things you can do to change things while you're welding. One of them is the angle of this wire. If you'll watch, I can take less wire by laying it flatter, and I can take more wire by standing it up. And the more wire I take, the more it cools the puddle. So if you feel like it's getting hot, stand your wire up a little bit. And then I always recommend everybody sneak up on your edges. Don't weld the middle, weld the edges. And that helps to keep a nice, clean edge for you when you're all done at the end of the day, at the end of the bead. But other than that, just stay relaxed. Don't death grip your wire. Don't death grip your torch. The more relaxed you are, the better result you're going to get. So let's pull out here and see how it looks. So one of the things that you hear a lot of guys discuss and you see a lot on the internet is going to be the coloration of your weld, especially with stainless. There's a lot of speculation out there. Like for me, I was taught coming up through the trade, you want the pink mauve colors, that's ideal. Now you're starting to see a lot of guys getting this blue in there. I like that blue, I think it's pretty and it looks slick. I do know this, the darker your coloration starts to get, the hotter you've got in the weld. So if you get much darker than the blues and you start rolling it into the blacks and the real dark purples, you're probably getting a little on the hot side. Maybe pick up your speed just a little bit. Maybe check your gas pressure and make sure you got everything squared away and uh, things are going your way as far as that goes. But otherwise, just uh, play with it. Be consistent. Consistency is everything with TIG. It's really important with your stainless. If you really want a nice, slick looking stainless weld, sneak up on your edges, weld past the middle, get some good gas purge going and just have fun with it, enjoy it. And believe in yourself. The biggest thing is believe that you can and you probably can. Some of the most common mistakes made are going to be amperage, how much gas flow, using the wrong uh, materials with the wrong wire. For example, this, uh, this big 300 amp torch here wouldn't be so great on your exhaust tubing for your muscle car, but it works great for pipe welding or, or the things that we're doing here. So those would be the most common. And then the other one I can't stress enough, especially with stainless, is cleanliness. Keep everything clean. If you cut it with uh, anything, with any sort of oils or anything, you want to make sure and clean that off of there and clean it well. Use clean rags. Electrical parts cleaner is a really good source. Any kind of good, good like an acetone or something like that will clean it nicely. Carburetor cleaner does not work. That's got a petroleum base. You want to avoid anything with a petroleum base to weld on your stainless. Other than that, that's about it. I mean, it's just a pretty basic system. Doesn't need any overthinking, really. Just a couple of things, a couple techniques, and a positive attitude, and you got it. You can handle it.
All right, everybody, so that was a basic entry-level lesson on stainless steel welding. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you want to get better at it, go to applytoweld.com, and we'll see you on the next weld.